Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass today uh, for priests, for good vocations to the priesthood and religious life. For Sue Ann Peters and family, Nicole Akim, Padmini Peters, for the poor, suffering, and sick, <clears throat> the dying, and those recommended to our prayers, for the soul, repose of the souls of Pauline Fox Seang, Conrada Limbo, and Father Joel Boreo, for those who died recently, for the conversion of sinners, the salvation of souls, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And it's the feast, the commemoration of Saint Cornelius, Pope, and Cyprian, Bishop, and both martyrs. In the name, oh no, sorry. <clears throat> The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who followed in the footsteps of Christ, and since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave saints sisters Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs. Grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, let no one despise your youth but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Till I come, attend to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophetic utterance, when the elders lay their hands upon you. Practice, these duties, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Take heed to yourself and to your teaching. Hold to that, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thanks be to God. Great are the works of the Lord. Great are the works of the Lord. His handiwork is justice and truth. His precepts are all of them sure, standing firm forever and ever, wrought in uprightness and truth. Great are the works of the Lord. He has sent redemption to his people and established his covenant forever. Holy his name to be feared. Great are the works, the works of, of the Lord. Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understanding marks all who attain it. His praise endures forever. Great are the works of the Lord. Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat at table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was sitting at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering him said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, what is it, teacher? A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. Now, which of them will love him more? And Simon answered, the one, I suppose, to whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But those who are forgiven little, love little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
What a wonderful story. Everybody in it is interesting for different reasons. Simon, the Pharisee, is interesting in that he is the host and he invited Jesus to dinner. Whatever his motives, uh, he was open to having Jesus eat with him. But he must have had mixed motives because he, he wasn't a very good host. He did not <coughs> observe the ritual of hospitality that was common in the time of Jesus to welcome a guest by washing their feet because of the dust and all that of the roads and to give them the welcome kiss or embrace and indeed to offer them oil to anoint their heads and make them you know, ready for the celebration. He neglected all of that so he may have had other motives in inviting Jesus. And then there's this very colourful woman who comes with a dubious reputation uh, of being a public sinner. Everybody seemed to know she was a sinner, a public sinner. In other words, one of the town prostitutes. But her dramatic gestures, what attracted her to Jesus and how she behaved towards him, weeping over his feet. As Jesus said, washing his feet with her tears and drying them with her hair and giving him the ritual embrace and kiss of welcome. Gestures which in themselves spoke in place of all words. No words at all from this woman. But she performed actions which were um, full of meaning and delicacy and respect. Indeed, each of them a prayer without words, a prayer of sorrow, her tears, a prayer of repentance, and most of all, a prayer of love and respect for Jesus. And then, of course, there's the people in between who are sitting around, other guests, <coughs> who are wondering to themselves, well, what's going on? <laughs> what is she up to? Doesn't this rabbi know that this is a character with a certain reputation? And here he is forgiving sins. Almost like, who does he think he is? And then there's the parable buried in the middle of the story about the two debtors. One, let's say, owing 500 rand and the other owing 50 and both being freed from their debt. And Jesus using such a little simple parable to show which really felt greatest gratitude and love, the one who was absolved of the biggest debt. So it's, it's a story that bears long meditation, a story which is full of interest for us. And of course, we mustn't miss the punchlines that faith saves, faith heals, and faith loves. And it shows love in gestures and in words and in a transformation of life. For she was forgiven her many sins, her public sins, her shame. She is restored 
in the eyes of all the people present. And so we take great heart and comfort when we come to Jesus despite our sins because he is the same Jesus who forgives us and heals us and loves us too. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, <coughs> God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Holy Spirit. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that give them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give order to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth 
sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit 
to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord, I am not worthy. That you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, says the Lord, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom.
uh, through the, let us pray, through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, and us in the day of battle, we are safeguard in snares of the devil. God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits through the world in the ruin of souls.